after the fact, use computation to take the place of optics. And so with computation, you then have a lot more flexibility. So at the time that you're going to view the picture, you can actually change the, the vantage point, the viewpoint a little bit, and you can also change the focus. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. Well, Instead of one ray per pixel, you're now catch, capturing a lot of different rays right. for that very same pixel. Right, they're independent rays showing how the light came in from all different angles at that pixel. Now what's, the, what's the, 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 the complexity of the mathematics that is resolved that well, it turns out that to resolve that, to take these individual uh, little pieces of an image and put them together into one large image from any arbitrary view with any arbitrary focus, it turns out that texture mapping hardware is exactly what you need to do that, that that is just, just the right approach. And so using NVIDIA chips is just a perfect way to go. We've been able to get speed ups over, well, speed ups over CPU algorithm about 500 times. Wow. That's unbelievable. So, so uh, uh, if I were to take one picture then of a planoptic lens with all those micro micro lenses, mm -hmm. and I wanted to turn that that what we saw earlier, uh, maybe we could change now. Yeah, we could change to that uh, to what Todor has on his workstation here. Right. So what you're seeing here is the image, the raw image that the sensor captured from a micro lens array that's mounted behind the main lens of the camera, and it's. If Toter zooms out, why don't you zoom out actually? Well, all right, if you zoom out, you'll see that you can kind of make out actually what this is. It's a photograph of a girl taking a picture in front of some blue things. It's hard to see exactly. If we zoom in, we'll see exactly what that raw data is. It's lots of tiny little pieces of image. And each one is from a slightly different vantage point. And together, they comprise the whole image from all those different directions. Now, suppose I wanted to, to, to use, I'll just use, uh, and when you guys first started doing this research, you just ran it on a, on a cluster of CPUs. That's right. Right, because yeah. at the time, a programmable GPU wasn't really available right. at, at, at yet. Right. And so if I were to just take this image, and I wanted to figure out a way to now distill out right. a photograph. Right. What would it take? Well, with our earliest algorithms, it was about an hour to do it. Uh, wow. Then we were able to prove the algorithms, and then it was more like a minute or so. Mm -hmm. But now, in 120 hertz, we can be producing these views. I'm no kidding. kidding. Well, Fedor, show it to us. All right. So, so this is a dump of your of your uh, of basically the sensor. That's right. That's just the raw sensor image. And here now is the image put back together again. Now you can see this is like the photos I took in Thailand that unfortunately oh, no. the image is focused on the wrong thing. Oh, but no. the beauty is that with the uh, with computation we can now refocus in real time on anything at all. So nah. we the girl in focus. That's and that's David, that's magic. This is one of the most common like problems magic. that people have with photographs is they're unhappy with the focus. There's nothing they can do about it. So I could, I could literally refocus it on wherever I want to refocus it on. Well, I guess, you know, with some limits. So now you're focusing it on the, on the branches on the tree. That's right. And now it's going all the way toward the girl and you go all the way back again toward the, the those are beehives there. And put those in focus. That's so unbelievable. All those different levels. Now, of course, this is just one demonstration of the capability of planoptic lens coupled with um, a massive amount of image processing that comes along with parallel right. computing, but there's all kinds of algorithms you guys could you guys could invent in the future that takes advantage of right. having captured the radiance of the exactly. entire scene. Yes, right? exactly. So we can we'll be able to do things like high dynamic range. We'll be able to do things like if there's motion in the scene, being able to to uh, to get rid of some of the motion blur, or if there's motion in the camera, getting rid of the motion blur there. If, um, if you do this in video, obviously, it opens whole new possibilities for cinematographers to be able to be creative after the fact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So well, speaking of, uh, yep. Because we're capturing the radiance, the mm -hmm. four-dimensional radiance, or four-dimensional planoptic function, or light field. These are different terms. But because we're capturing this uh, huge amount of data, we have huge amount of power. And those include many different modalities not just 3D, not just refocusing, not just lens correction, HDR, and many others. Mm -hmm. so yeah, the what's power interesting is, is that, that so far, uh, digital photography has been really just about digitizing what used to be an analog process. That's right. 
And, and even, even with, with the current state of technology, once you've digitized it, you can still use Photoshop and all kinds of interesting algorithms to enhance That's right. and clean up the that digitization. Image.